of Borghese in mm -hmm. Rome, mm -hmm. looking at Bernini's Apollo and Daphne. Cupid has done some mischief, some mischief yeah. and has helped Apollo to uh, fall in love with Daphne. Thanks and, to an arrow. And is pursuing her. And I think but she's gotten an arrow of the opposite type. That's right. So she is repulsed by him. Right. But she's supposedly incredibly beautiful. So the story is that she appeals to her father. She's a nymph. She appeals to her father that she does not want to marry. And Apollo won't leave her alone. Cupid gives him a little assist. And he's able to actually catch up with her. And this is the moment when he wraps his arm around her. She calls out for her father's help, and her father solves the problem by turning her into a laurel tree. Which um, is happening even as he as, catches right. up to her. I was going to say, as we speak, because it feels like this is almost like a movie. Unfolding, yeah. it's true, in time. It's such an expression of the Burgundy. It's a drapery that flies back behind Apollo. A kind of velocity. Whipping around his body, fluttering out behind but him. But even as he's sort of really moving forward, and he's a beautifully, delicately rendered body, but she then arcs up and is transformed almost against her own will. And you see the sense of surprise and, and almost horror in her face. Oh, absolutely. And as her fingers turn into branches and leaves. And as he wraps his hand around her abdomen, he touches only the bark that forms around her. I mean, this is all about not attaining beauty and Apollo's passion. Almost having the thing that you want in your hands and having it slip out at that very moment when you attain it. But even as he's carelessly pursuing her, there is also delicacy for him. Look at the way his fingers are stretched out as if he's just recognizing what's happening to her and is taken aback even as his body is sort of slowing down in his pursuit of her. Mm -hmm. You think it's a sort of moment of recognition It for is. Him. His eyes on her sort of realizing yeah, what's that's happening. that's true. A kind of sadness. Sadness as he's taking in the expression of the tragedy on her face. And it also seems to me a kind of metaphor for sculpture itself, of turning one form into, into another. another. But this is, in a sense, a reversal of taking a natural material and turning it into flesh. This is the opposite. This is taking flesh and turning, and turning it, back it back into, into a into natural material. That you might sculpt out of. That's right. So, Wood. So that's interesting. This is a kind of meditation, then, on what sculpture is. And Bernini, more than anyone else, that's what he does. He makes marble seem like the wings of an angel or like a cloud. And of course the story resolves in that she turns into a rooted tree and he determines that he will always tend that tree and protect it. Mm -hmm.